Hey there, true crime friends. You know what time it is. It is time for lunchtime true crime. And honey, have I got a story for you today. You know what you have to do though. First, hit the like button. You gotta hit the like button on every video to help more people find us and subscribe to the channel. Look, today I was like, there is not any true crime that is inspiring me. And so maybe I just won't do a lunchtime true crime. That's fine. I guess I'll get on with my day. And then I ran into her. Susan Grund, honey, let me tell you all about her. Susan is from Peru, Indiana. I know a little something about Peru, Indiana because I myself am from Indianapolis. So, although I live in North Jersey now, but I'm from Indianapolis originally. So anything Indiana, I'm like, yes, tell me all about it. Susan was a nice small town girl and she was doing small town girl things. She was like a little bit hot in the pants, but sometimes that happens. She got married fairly early, she got married fairly early in her life and that marriage didn't work out. That little trial marriage. So she broke up with him, went on with her life. Okay, fine. Great, great, great. She gets married a second time and she has a baby. I'm like, oh, sweet little family there in Indiana. Everything is going to go great. And it didn't work out that good. So she divorced him. Now her third husband, she was like, look, third time is the charm. I'm about to get this third husband. It's about to all be good. So she meets a nice man. They moved to Oklahoma. And she was like, you know what? A change of scenery. That's what I needed. I have a kid. He has a kid. We're going to blend our families. We're going to be a very nice family over here in Oklahoma. This is going to be great. Only, tell you how Susan was not that good at marriage. She thought she was good at marriage. She was not that good at marriage. So, it all came to a head one day when she and her young stepson got into it and she beat him. Not just like um, gave him a spanking with a wooden spoon on his behind beat him. The hospital had to be caught. Like it was a situation. Um, so it's like the father was like, yeah, listen, uh, I know I'm your third husband. I'm about to be your third ex-husband. You can't touch my child. The, the fact that it didn't end right there. If this was me, there might've been a public service homicide, but listen. So Susan was like, I cannot go to jail. I am a young mother. And the father was like, no, we pressing charges and this help us going down. Ultimately, with some negotiation back and forth, she decided she would plead no contest. She would go ahead and take that felony conviction. Okay. And she was going to go back to Indiana. While that case was working its way through the court, you know, Susan met another man because of course she did. So, um, she goes on, she meets another man. And then when that case wraps up, she was like, okay, other man, I'm gonna I'm, I'm go back over to Indiana to my mama house. Cause you know, I didn't abuse the child. Nobody here in town wants me. So I'm gonna have to go. And he was like, okay, bye. So she goes back to Peru, Indiana. And over in Peru, she was like, oh, I'm a teensy bit pregnant. Not by my third husband, but by that, uh, you know, that, that dude that I got with in the meantime, he don't need to know that. We're not going to worry about that. So she's about town. She's like, okay, I'm about to be a single mother or two. Fine, fine. I'm going to get myself a job. I'm going to do what I have to do. So she's over doing a little job. And as a joke, one of her friends, one of the, her husband's friends, one of James's friends set her up with Susan, set him up with Susan, not telling him that Susan was pregnant. She was not showing. And everybody was like, this is going to be hilarious. Yes, she's young and hot and cute. She was still skinny but she's pregnant and he does know. And so they went on a couple of dates and he was like, I really like her. And everybody was like, wait, what? Hmm? You, you about to get with the town bicycle? You know the town bicycle child, everybody gets a ride. So she, he was like, yeah, 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 I really like her. And I think we are gonna be a family. Um, I'm trying to see if my, it's my husband coming down. So Shalom, what? your tuna's in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. okay, so look, a wife's work is never done. So, um. She, this dude, James, marries the town bicycle, and he's a prominent attorney. Now, think of it this way. Y'all familiar with the Murdoch clan, right? Many, many generations of prominent lawyers or whatever. Well, this dude was part of a very, very prominent family in town. And so he was like, look, I don't care if she's pregnant. She about to be my wife. Yes, I'm about to be husband number four. And Susan was like, oh, look at me. I'm back in the high life now. Now, she went from being a lowly single mother who was pregnant to a married wife in a fancy house. They were the talk of Peru. Everybody knew them. And so she was suddenly a society lady. And they were like, oh, looks like you can't turn a garden tool into a housewife because this is what has happened. So she's just like, oh, I'm on the scene and I'm at all the ladies' teas and I'm doing the this and I'm doing the that. Meanwhile, the women in town are like, mm. 
You see her, right? He was a catch, and now he's with her. Okay, whatever. But this is 1992. It's a long time ago. So she has her big shoulder pads and her teased up hair. And it's Indiana. I'm sure they went to church and they went to the country club and they went to Cotillion. They did all the things. And when her daughter was born, he was like, this is my new daughter. Yes, I am not the biological father and I know it and everybody knows it, but I do not care. This is my child. Okay. Well, Jimmy, this was his second marriage too. And he had some kids, some older kids from his first marriage. Fine. The families, they didn't blend that good. Everybody was not getting along that good, but the older kids had already moved out of the house. They're off doing their own thing. So Susan and James, they stay married 10 years. Everything is going great. As far as everybody knows, if they had had Facebook back then, they would have been like, look how cute they are on Facebook. Yes. She shows up at everything. Every event, her dress was slit too high, cut too low. She was a little like, mm, hello, other the lawyers in town. She was shaking her groove thing all over the place and word on the street is that she was giving it up out of both draw legs, but you ain't heard that from me. So he gets ready. Um, the, the marriage goes along and he was like, I suspect that my formerly trollop wife is still kind of a trollop. She just out here with the doctors and the lawyers and the Indian chiefs. She giving it to everybody. And it's not a good look because I am from a prominent family. So we might want to like, I, I think I'm gonna have to divorce her. And he was, Susan was like, look, we're going on a family vacation to Alaska. Why don't we just go on our vacation? You know, before people travel, often they change their wills. Okay. Some people do that. Susan was like, before we go, you know, we have to change the will. And so she marched him down to his law office and had the will changed. And the secretary was like, you read this, right? Because her first kid was not included in this will. And now her first kid, that's not by you. Well, I mean, truthfully, neither one of her kids was by him. But your stepson is now included in this well. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She just wants me to do this for this vacation. As soon as we get back from vacation, I'm going to change everything back to like it was and fully include my children. Don't worry about it. This will is only going to be in effect for a couple of weeks, sir. Clearly, you did not watch Dateline or follow any kind of true crime. I don't know what kind of lawyer he was. Clearly, it was not a criminal attorney. Because what do you think happened when they came back from Alaska? Listen, frankly, I'm surprised that he survived the trip to Alaska. I fully expected her to unalive him right there in Alaska, but that is not what she did. One night after the trip, she comes home and she said, he sleep on the couch. She takes the kids to the ballet and the swimming and the camp and the whatever. She's all over town and she comes home and her daughter's like, mommy, can I kiss daddy goodnight? And she was like, no, nah, daddy is asleep. Go on to bed. You'll see him in the morning. And then she goes to tuck him in and it's like, oh, oh me, oh my. Someone has shot him through his eye. Through his eye? Somebody was serious about killing him because he was good and dead. So she was like, hello, 911. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. But because he was a prominent attorney in town, everybody in town showed up. All these people was on the crime scene, contaminating it all up over there in Peru, Indiana. But the state police were like, no, 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 no. These local cops, they don't know what they're doing. Everybody stand back. We are going to cover this entire situation and make sure it's done right. And also we want to search warrant because we know this trollop over here probably up to something, but you ain't heard it from me. So bye baby. Have a good day. Oh, okay. So, um, she, they are, uh, hang on, I got it. I didn't talk my throat dry. Y'all know how it is. So the state police come in and they trying to clean up the scene and make sure and do whatever. They check it out, everything, fingerprinting, everything. And they're like, before we take one thing out of this house, we are getting a search warrant. They get a search warrant. They search high and low. They cannot find a gun or any sort of murder weapon anywhere. And they were like, hmm, maybe she didn't do it. Maybe something else is going on here. Okay, so they start investigating, but they can't find anything. And Susan is like, I have to move out of this house. I'm going to move into my mom's house because it's too devastating to live in our former mansion with all the money he has left me. I'm going to go over here and cry in a stack of hundreds at my mama's house. So she's over living at her mama's house with her kids and her money and her everything else. She has lunch with her sister. And she says to her sister, um... You were at the house when they searched the house, right? Because you know I couldn't be there. It was too stressful for me. And the sister was like, yeah, um, I was there. Why? And she was like, did they find it? Hmm? Sister was like, I'm sorry, what now? She's like, yeah, the gun. Did they find the gun? Her sister was like, oh, no. What, girl? Say more. So she was like, 
Yeah, you know, I shot Jimmy. He was about to divorce me. You know I wasn't trying to have that. When am I going to be poor with two kids? Absolutely not. So the sister was like, really? Well, where's the gun? She was like, oh, I hit it. Drive me back over to the house and I'm going to take it out the house. So the sister drives Susan over to the house and gets this teddy bear with the gun sewn inside of it. I appreciate her handiwork, honestly. A gun inside a teddy bear? That's really quite clever. Um, and she probably didn't leave any gunshot residue. She probably wiped it off with pledge and everything. So um, she takes the gun in the teddy bear, puts it someplace in the mama's house. And the sister sits on this information for a couple months. And she's like, hmm, I did want her to buy me that new Nova. And I still have not gotten it yet. And she is a bit of a garden tool. And she is unaliving people. How do I know she's not going to unalive me next? So this sister was like, hey, Mr. Popo, can I talk to you for a minute? I had this interesting conversation with my sister. So the police took notes and they were like, great, 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 great. Listen, we're going to wire you up and we want you to go have another conversation with your sister. And so they wire her up and she goes and she, the sister was like, Susan was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Why ever would I shoot my beloved Jimmy? He was the light of my life. Wink. But she didn't give up no information, right? And so the cops were like, okay, we know she did it. We just have to prove it. They do some more searching around and they end up arresting her. They're like, we'll put it together on the back end. It's fine. Meanwhile, the mama was like, okay, I don't understand what's happening. But what I do know is that when Susan moved in with all of her stuff from her mansion, she cleaned out my basement. And while she was cleaning out the basement, she threw out an old wash tub. And I asked her, Susan, where is my rusty old wash tub? And she's like, oh, ma, that thing was trash. I threw it away. So the mother was like, okay. So mom is like, imagine my surprise when I go up to my attic and there's that old wash top tub filled with cement. So what did I do? I called the police because you know that mama and the sister were talking. They were like, well, this happened and killed him. We don't know what she's going to do next. Maybe she's going to kill us. Do we get some of the money if she goes to jail? Anyway, so the mother was like, hello, officer friendly. Um, My daughter, you might want to, I don't, I'm not touching the wash tub, but what I'm saying is this a tub full of concrete in my attic. You might want to come and look at it. So the police come and they get the wash tub and they dissolve all the concrete and they find the gun buried inside the concrete. Surprise, surprise. First a teddy bear and then in a wash tub. I appreciate this woman's ingenuity for one. And so they um, file it down and get the serial number and they're like, okay, we're going to do some ballistics testing and whatever. Meanwhile, Susan was like, that was not me. I did not shoot him. That was my stepson, David. And David was like, wait, what now? Hmm? Well, how did my name get in it? And David was like, listen, Susan knew I had a gun. And I, she came to my house one time and I showed her where the gun was. No sooner than I got the gun that the gun disappeared. I reported it stolen, haven't seen it since. And the cops were like, great, did you ever test fire that weapon? And he was like, of course I did. Into the woods behind my house. Check that tree right there. You'll find bullets. So they pull the bullets out of the tree. They compare them with the bullets out of the gun. And what do you know? It is the same gun. Susan is not done yet, though. When she goes on trial, she was like, Yes, I have to confess, I had many, many, many affairs during the course of my marriage to Jimmy. Not because I didn't love him, but because, you know, I'm just a natural garden tool. I don't know what you want me to do. Some people are just like that, and I'm so sexy and delightful. Men could not resist me, and I could not resist them. And yes, I slept with all of my husband's business partners, and what? And they were like, ma'am, focus. This is Peru, Indiana, the buckle of the Bible belt. So you could be sentenced to life on the strength of you a hoe. So you might want to tone down, turn that down. And she was like, but wait, there's more. This is why I know I did not kill him. Jimmy's son, David, killed him. Everybody was like, wait, what now? And she said, yes, I tried to cover for him. I came home and I found him dead. And everybody knows David and Jimmy were not getting along. And I was like, oh, my stepson has killed his father. And they said, why would you cover for your stepson though? He don't even like you. And she's like, well, the truth is David and I, my stepson, we've been having an affair. Drop the mic. Everybody was clutching their pearls and falling out. Folks was rolling in the aisle in shock. And you know, I was like, well, this is where I lean in because now I need to know every single thing. And David was like, look, I did not sleep with that trollop. And Susan was like, yes, we did. You know, you have a mole. And he was like, okay, okay, then listen. I did not sleep with her. She's a big fat liar. Y'all gonna do, need to do some more investigation. 
So the jury gets all the information and they go out and Susan was sitting there twirling her little pearls. Oh, and apparently she was not dressed in her regular trollop wear that she usually wore around town. She was dressed like a church mother. You know how they do. High neck and very conservative, but loose fitting. And you know, she probably had her head bowed. She probably had on a Sunday hat with a veil and some dark sunglasses in the courtroom. I don't know what she looked like, but that in my imagination, that's what she was wearing. And she was just like, praise God, I would like to testify now, girl, we gonna need you to stop. Just stop. So the jury goes out, right? And they're out for hours and hours and hours. Finally, they come back at like midnight, one in the morning. Everybody's like, okay, here we go. Guard two about to go down. And so um, she was, oh, and during the course of that case, they talked about the fact that she had a former felony conviction where she beat her stepson and had pled no contest. And the, the jury was like, she's a hoe. She slept with a son. She had the gun and she beat a child. Still, we're hung. We are hopelessly deadlocked. How much you want to bet that Susan got with some of them dudes on the jury? Okay, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. So they were like, okay, we're going to have to have a new trial. So they have a new trial five months later. Meanwhile, Susan's sitting in prison like, I don't know. I, there's no way they could convict me. So in the second trial, no mention can be made of her prior felony because it's considered a prior bad act. Okay, fine. So the jury goes out, they get all the information and they think about it and they toss and turn and they come back and they're like, yeah, she's guilty. LWAP. Life. Well, she got life with the possibility of parole. Okay, and Susan, listen, Susan was there on the Snapped episode. She looked like a school barb. She was like, I don't know why they would suspect me. Yes, I slept with everybody I ever met. And yes, I had two kids by five men. Um, I know that math is not mathing, but you know, you know how kittens can get pregnant. Cats can get pregnant and have kittens by a couple different daddies. That's what I was trying hard to do because I just was giving it up to everybody. But I'm a nice lady now. And Mr. Producer, I could do things for you. And the producer was like, calm down, Susan. I don't, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I, I try not to get with the felony punani. So um, Susan was just like, okay, well, how did they get Susan in a red dress in prison? Did they give her wardrobe for this snap shoot? I am fascinated. So they have her over in prison looking like a school marm. Although at first you don't even know she's in prison. I was like, this heifer done got off. She done slept her way out of prison. What? Turns out she didn't. She been in prison since 1992. Here's the thing though. She got convicted with the possibility of parole. When do you think she comes up with parole? Just take a guess. Just take a little guess. She was convicted in 1992. She is eligible for parole in 2024. Next year. Susan could be y'all's neighbor. All I'm saying is, hide your kids, hide your husband, hide your fluffy bunnies, because who the heck knows what she's into now. Hopefully post-menopause is all dried up and she has found her way to the straight and narrow. Maybe she found Jesus because Jesus be down there at the jail and not any of our intercessor, uh, 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 any of our replacement deities. I'm not talking Beyonce. I'm not talking the Golden Girls, but I'm talking actual Jesus be down there at the jail because everybody be finding Jesus when they go to prison. And I guarantee you, Susan is no different. P.S. As her story came out, somebody decided to write a book about her. Okay, she's getting out next year. Somebody's writing a book about her. That is delightful. Her biographer was there at the prison all the time, writing her story and taking down her information and getting to know her. Um, Guess who's engaged to be married to her biographer? None other than the former Miss Susan Grund. So she, she could be coming to a neighborhood near you. Um, not sure if the book ever came out. Guarantee you she was giving them handies under the table over there at the prison, but you ain't heard that from me. But all that to say, um, be careful, y'all. Look up her picture. If Susan Grund moves into your neighborhood, you might want to move. You might want to get like the HOA together and be like, this happened? Nah, 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 nah. Two felonies on her record. And what really happened with the stepson did not come out into the sentencing phase. Turns out that stepson that she beat was permanently damaged. He still suffers the ill effects of the damage that he had. She was like, oh, he's clumsy. He fell down the stairs. Ma'am, you beat that child with an inch of his life and it's a crying shame. They should take you out and beat you, but I'm not in charge of that. But what I'm saying is we might, we might need some pest control for that one. So um, 
fan out, ladies. Get your update, your WhatsApp, and uh, be fully prepared. Because Susan is coming home soon. And um, the welcome wagon, she'll probably be there to greet her. Okay. Y'all have a great rest of your day. For um, the Gossip Room Run in Uendo members, I will see you tonight on our late night check-in. Because you know how we do. We get together late at night and have a very little informal kiki. But it's the members only. Those of you who are not members, you're not missing nothing. We just... We just have a private little chat, private little chat. Um, but if you want to join us, hit the members button and um, come on in. It's a good time over there. We'll see you soon. Bye.